Hello, welcome back to Compiler Hacking. So for a while now, I've been eyeing the prize of getting Natalie to be able to compile itself. And uh, we're still a ways off from that, but tonight I thought I'd do a little bit of chill programming. And I've already started, so this is a little test I wrote. Um, it'd be really cool if Natalie could compile uh, the pass one of our compiler. Just pass one, and it's a four pass compiler, so that would be one quarter of the work. And uh, I ran this through Ruby, and this uh, this is the AST of the Fibonacci um, code. And when you run the AST of the Fibonacci uh, example code through the pass one of the compiler, then you get this uh, intermediate AST which is sort of transformed from the, the raw AST, transformed into something that's starting to more resemble Ruby. And that's kind of how our multi-pass compiler works. Uh, but this is, you know, kind of gross and gnarly, but that's okay. Uh, this is what our compiler produces. And if I can get Natalie to compile the compiler and then run this and produce the same intermediate AST, then we are golden and i hope that makes sense i might have to draw a diagram because um, i'm really struggling to even explain it i don't think i have the education and um, uh, like nomenclature to really explain what i'm doing i'm sure there's really great fancy fine big words that explain this process uh, and i'm sorry i don't use them because i am an amateur and don't really know what i'm doing but anyway uh, so that's it, trying to get it to compile its own code. And pass one of the compiler is this Ruby file. And it's uh, not quite a thousand lines, 938 lines of code. So let's just see if we can get something to happen. So we'll run make here, make sure everything is up to date. Okay, so I'm gonna run test, Nelly, compiler, test and see what error we get and see what it would take to fix it. Undefined method each with object for enumerator. Pass one, line 607. So there's something we don't have in pass one, 607, right here, each with index, and you can't call each with object on an enumerator. So this, when it's not given a block, returns an enumerator. Uh, we did a video on that a while back about enumerators and how they use fibers internally. Uh, but anyway, I just got this working to where it returns an enumerator, but now I need to uh, have a numerator, enumerator. It needs to have each with object. And I thought that was something that was an enumerable, but it might just be that we haven't implemented it yet. Yeah, I guess that's exactly what it is. So what would it take to uh, implement each with object spec? We'll enable this spec here and yeah, let's just run it. Oh, what file was that? Core enumerable each with object spec. Okay, wrong number of arguments. Uh, undefined method, each with object. So let's focus on this one here. That's line 14, which is this one. We'll just focus that test. And I'm going to run uh, my little tool that I like to run. Uh, which is called ENTR, and it uh, whenever it sees files change, then it runs our tests. Okay, undefined method each with object for an and what is numerous spec num numerous. Where is that? Oh, where is that defined class numerous? 
Um, it's just an enumerable and it has an each. Okay. And our enumerable needs a new thing. We don't. I thought we had each with index. Yeah, we do. Let's put it underneath that def each. Actually, let's just copy it. Each with object. Um, passes each element and its argument to the block. Well, I assume, well, I probably shouldn't assume. Probably shouldn't assume. It usually gets me in trouble. Uh, Ruby each with object. Does it take multiple parameters? Each with object. Nope, it just takes the one argument. Okay, very well. Very well. So the object, we don't need the index. Um, we don't need the args, and we'll get rid of that here too. We don't need the index plus one. So if there's a block, then we're going to loop through each thing and we're going to pass the object. And we're going to yield, oh, nope, that's not right. We're going to pass the object here. We're going to yield the item and the object, and then we're going to return self. Okay. If there's no block given, we're returning an enumerator. And in the enumerator, um, we're just going to do this. Well, if that's all that we need to do, then it's not too bad. Passes each element and its argument to the block. Okay. End should oh. End should equal initial. Oh, it returns the object. Okay. Aha. Well, that one's passing. Let's see what other specs are not passing. Uh, we really get the benefit of having these specs pre-written. This is part of the Ruby spec library that I did not write. So that's a huge benefit. Um, nil should equal to memo line 29. Uh, Okay, so if you return an enumerator and you call each on it, then it needs to return the object here, I believe. No, line 29 is still, it's still nil. I may not be able to, this may be a bug in how we're doing a numerator. Okay, fix me, because uh, I think that is a separate bug. Okay, let's look at line 37. Each with object, object equals element. Gathers whole arrays as elements when each yields multiple. What? What does that mean? One, three, six should be equal to huh okay yields multi where is this Um, 
fascinating. So, hmm. This should be item like that, I guess. Same here, but I think it's like if item size greater than one, then we do it that way. We'll say items, items else. We're just gonna do the items first. I think that's what we have to do. I'm gonna say items here. Now we'll see. See if I got it right. Now we're down to two failing specs. That's good. Uh, wrong number of arguments. Given zero, expected one. Uh, size returns the enumerable size. Line five. Line five. No, that's not. That's not a spec. Enumeratorized shared. Numerator eyesed. What line? 15. Um, size return when no block is given, return a numerator. Method size should equal to object size. Send method size. What is the method right there? It's nil. I'm gonna comment that out because I don't know that I care about that right now. I'm just trying to get my stuff to compile. I'll we'll put a big fix me here too. I know. Uh, this is not super thorough work. This is just trying to get stuff to happen. So let's commit that. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All of this and all of this. Um, implement uh, most of enumerable each with object. Okay, so back to my compiler test, and we'll run this test Nelly compiler test. Hmm. Undefined method map for a hash. Okay. HTTP. That's right, we don't have a map. Um, I wonder if it makes sense to write this in Ruby. I think so. So if I say class hash, let me just make sure that's how we do it over here, yeah. We just reopen the, the class and add what we want. So let's do a map and if block given I should, I should find a spec for this hash spec. Oh, oh, is 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 that because it's an enumerable? Hmm. Fascinating. Hash. Nope. I have a hash here. Method map owner is enumerable. Oh. So I don't need this at all. Let's just delete this uh, hash. Okay. So what does that mean? That's another enumerable spec. Enumerable map spec. We already have map. 
uh, that just means that we haven't included enumerable in hash. Do we have each? Yes. Uh, oh, we did include enumerable right there. Okay. So if I have a hash to hash each, uh, wait, what was it? Oh, map dot map key value and I print the key and the value undefined method map for hash enumerable map wait we really don't have map We have map on array. Interesting method map because array owns its own map, but enumerable also has a map. Okay, enumerable map spec. Let's uh, see if we can do this. And this will be spec uh, core enumerable map spec initialize constant scratch pad hmm what does scratch pad do Something tells me that is a thing that is provided by the, the test library that Ruby spec uses that we don't have. So Ruby spec GitHub, we'll find out. But it wouldn't be here. I don't think it would be, uh, I think it's called M spec is the library they use and we we don't use this because I would have to compile that uh, so we have just mimicked it but can you search scratch pad describe scratch pad well there's the spec for it that well, seems pretty simple let's Let's just write it real quick. So in our test support spec uh, library that we've written, we can just have a class scratch pad and let's paste in this junk. Okay, so it has a record method. I guess it's a class a singleton method record um, item record equals item I guess def recorded record okay so that should take care of both of these it clears okay clear recorded is nil Okay, that takes care of that one. And if you if you say record an array, and then you use these um, thingies, the less than less than, then it actually adds it to the record. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, recorded should equal to that. Cool. So does that fix this problem? Well, we got different errors. That's nice, except ugh, definitely got some corruption going going on. It's not a symbol nor a string. Ooh, 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 ooh. Wild. 
map spec line five. Memorable map. Uh, line 11, numerous send method. I think this is what we were running into earlier where we're passing in a nil, <clears throat> a nil right there. <clears throat> Yeah, look at that. Okay, well, maybe this video is going to turn into me working on our spec library. Because there's something wrong with this. It behaves like... Oh, it's not, it's not keeping this. Okay, it behaves like. So we implemented that here. And we do the method here. At method equals... I mean, it should be setting it. Is it something about block call? I have to try this in IRB. So if I have at foo equals high, and I have a and I have a proc that tries to print foo, and I do pr dot call. Yeah, that works. So let's do one here and two here. I just need one. Let's just focus this one. Okay. So one is nil also. What if I change this just to a before each? Nope. Before, wrong number of arguments. Still nil. So is this not actually running? Okay, what does before do? Context last before all. Well, I'm definitely getting something. Well, what is the method here? Okay, it is map. But then it's nil. Fascinating. Yeah, that's a, that's a little weird. Let's do this. Behavior 
method behavior method I would expect those to be the same okay I guess this one goes with this one so that is the same and these are just different so I'm getting these mixed up so the really the only one I care about is this Okay. Uh, I don't exactly know how to fix that, but let's just, I don't know, how are we gonna handle this? I wanna get this working, but I don't care about it tonight. So I think what I want to do is put back this uh, map spec and then write our own. Let's go to array test. So we have our own test that we've written. And let's do enumerable test RB. And we are going to write our own test for map. Really surprised I didn't have an enumerable test already. Describe map. And so if I have a class called th uh, things, and it includes enumerable, and it has an each method, and it yields one, yield two, yield three. And then I say things dot map i times two should equal two, four, and six. So let's do this test Natalie enumerable test. This should fail for a good reason. And if I method map for things class, oh, I guess it needs to be dot new but it should still be a similar error and if I method map for things and now we can go write that I'm still puzzled by that behaves like not working but um, like I said I'm not it's not imperative that that works right now things.new.map so we can just put it I don't know, we'll just put it here. So map. And um, it's going to be a lot like this one, actually. And, but instead of an if, it's going to add to the array the result of yielding the item. Zero specs passed. Oh, because I didn't actually write a test. It... Uh, returns a new array uh, resulting from ye from you know I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go with that returns a new array uh, turns a new array yielding each item to the block we'll go with that perfect so let's commit that enumerable that's that and what did we work on here oh we definitely don't want to keep that we do want to keep the scratch pad but I don't think we ended up using it uh, we're gonna add this one and we're gonna say add enumerable map 
And then let's go add that um, scratch pad as well. Add a scratch pad for Ruby spec to use later. Not actually using it right now. Okie dokie. So back to our compiler test. I think I've got it in me to fix maybe one or two more issues and then we're gonna call it good. Undefined method square brackets for a symbol. Pass one five twenty seven. Pass one line five twenty seven. Path details. Uh, -boo -boo -boo. Oh, interesting. Interesting. So prepare M assign paths returns a hash and mapping over a hash. We should we should test that. It um, works with a hash. <laughs> so if I say H equals one, two, three, four, H dot map key value, key value should equal one, two, three, four. Oh, so it's not actually passing. Now, is that the fault of each on our hash? Let's go look at that. Um, hash value CPP, each. So each, uh, yeah, so it's actually passing the value. It's passing two arguments to the block. Okay, so I believe hash.each is doing the right thing, but our map is not. What are we doing wrong? Should we do the same thing here? We have these items, and then we say if items size greater than one, then we do like this, else we do this dot first. I'm starting to see a pattern here. Does that fix it? Yes. Okay. So let's add that and let's add that and we'll say, oops, fix enumerable ha uh, map for hashes. Um, actually yield items properly to the block. Okay. So back to our compiler test. Undefined method start with for a symbol. Well, I have to see if we have a symbol and we say start with in it's true. Uh, line 495 of our pass one, 495. Arg is a symbol, arg start with this. Okay, well, that won't be too hard to, to uh, fix. If we have a symbol value, string value, how did we do this? Start with, we're just gonna copy this over here and string value CPP start with, and we're gonna copy that over to symbol value CPP. And I'm just gonna stick it down here. Don't really know where to put this symbol value start with needle. It's fascinating is if I say uh, Tim start with T is a symbol. No, it, it only takes a string. That's so awesome. Okay. 
I mean, awesome in a weird way. Um, it's obviously not going to do that, but we can do. Two uh, S, I believe, A and V. Symbol value HPP. Do I have a two S? Yeah. So it returns a string value. So if I say two S dot send, actually I can just do start with EMV uh, needle and return that. Oh my. Return. And then we have to make a binding for that symbol. Just gonna copy that and put it right here. Symbol, symbol value. Start with one R returns a bool. Um, I didn't add a spec for that. Well, that's just me being lazy. Um, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna do the right thing. Symbol test. Describe start with it returns true if the symbol when converted to a string starts with the given substring do okay so I say uh, Tim start start with uh, T should be true say Tim with an empty string with should be false. Okay. So we can commit that. Uh, symbol test, symbol value, symbol value, and bindings. Yes, this one and this one. Wait, what? Binding gen. Oh, right. Binding gen symbol start with. Perfect. Let me just look through this because I think I accidentally. Yeah, I did. I did. Accidentally put something else in here. Let's just try that again. Okay. Uh, not the sex processor, not the compiler test, but symbol value, yes. Binding gen, yes, 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 and yes. Let's try that again. Do, 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 start, do, put out, we need, okay. Add symbol start with method. Well, we're making some headway here, and I think this might be my last fix right now, and then we're gonna call it good. Uh, I think this was a decent session for one evening, and whoa, wait. My compiler test passed. <laughs> I'm in disbelief. Really? Okay, so like if I change this one thing, this should fail? Uh, it works, friends, it works. We are able to, Natalie is complete enough that it can compile all of pass one, which is a 938 line file that I wrote in in my style of Ruby without any regard for what, what was Natalie capable of doing. I just wrote it in Ruby the way I would normally write Ruby. So I don't know how, how to explain how huge this is for me, that this, this is now the largest Ruby file that Natalie has compiled and run? Well, yeah. 
Yeah, that's that's it. It's able to compile that and produce the proper Oh, I'm sorry. I'm still in shock. So pass one of the compiler can now be compiled by Natalie. And when it's run, it's actually producing the right output for the Fibonacci example code. So there's a little bit of a little bit of like inception going on here. And it's just blowing my mind that it works. <laughs> it's so good. Well, I, I mean, you heard me. I was I was going to give up and say, hey, that's good enough for tonight. We'll pick it up here tomorrow. But this was even better than I expected. So, yeah, um, that is that. Let's commit it. So we had to. Did, did I need to do this? Yes. Fascinating. So the, the other reason I'm really surprised is I just stubbed this out. I didn't even write enough code. Like I didn't implement all of these things. So the fact that this works for our purposes of compiling an entire 900 line file uh, is also blowing my mind. So yeah, um, add test for compiling pass one of our compiler. Um, we're on the road to bootstrapping. You know, I wonder if I'm using that term right. Let's just look it up. You know, this is what I do when I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I mean, that's basically what it is. Bootstrapping is a technique for producing a self-compiling compiler. That is a compiler written in the source programming language that it intends to compile. I think that's what we're doing. Um, someone correct me. If, Correct me in the comments if I'm using the term incorrectly, but that's what basically what I want to do. I want to be able to have, um, at the end of the day, if I show you the tree, here's here's Natalie, right? You know, minus the tests. Here's all the source files, uh, but then there's also where is it? Oh, come on. Well, I'll just show you tree lib. There you go. Here's the lib folder. So here's all the Ruby that our compiler and our parser, uh, well, part of our parser and the REPL, all that's written in Ruby. And if we can compile this into a, a single binary that we that I can distribute, then that, that's going to be so awesome. Oh. Anyway, I, that's all I got to say. So, hey, thanks for hanging out with me on this. This was like momentous for me uh, that this is working. So uh, next, I'll be working on pass two, I think. Let's see if we can get it compiling. And the good news about pass two, it's not very big. It's only 166 lines. Same thing for pass three. It's even smaller, 56 lines. And then the big boy is pass four is 714 lines but the biggest one was pass one um which we just finished so whoo uh i guess i will see you next time thanks for hanging out and uh that's it bye